Hi, my name is Ben. I appreciate you uh, tuning in to see what I have to say about erythrocytosis because erythrocytosis affects a lot of people. It may affect you, certainly affects me. We're talking about the condition that contributes to forming too many red blood cells in the body. Now, if you have too many red blood cells, that means that you might be forming a clot at any time. So how do we treat erythrocytosis? Well, there are many ways. Usually the simplest way is to go to the American Red Cross and they will use a blood bag and pull out some blood. But that's not convenient for everybody. It's not right for everybody. And if you happen to need to draw out a lot of blood, maybe two pints instead of one unit, uh, then it takes a lot more paperwork and red tape at the American Red Cross to do that. And of course they won't accept you if you have polycythemia and a bunch of other conditions, <coughs> curly hair or whatever. <laughs> but they, uh, they will uh, draw some blood if you have perfect blood. Now I'm going to talk to the people that uh, maybe you live out in the country, maybe you don't have access to facilities, <coughs> maybe you don't have any insurance, maybe you can't afford the copay. There are a lot of reasons why you may not be able to have blood drawn. But if your blood is too thick, and that's called the emetic rate, the uh, thickness of the blood, if it's too thick, you can form deep vein clots very easily. Deep vein clots are life-threatening. I don't know what your situation may be, <clears throat> but often clotting is genetic. It's, it's a syndrome of polycythemia or other conditions. doesn't matter. Procedure is the same to correct it. We have to pull out too much blood. If you've got too much blood, <clears throat> we're going to pull it out. Now, there's a couple ways of doing that. If you go to the American Red Cross or if you go online, you can order these blood bags with a needle. I got a whole box of case of these things and I have yet to have any of them work. They tell me it's very, very difficult to get them to work. It's just part of the nature of the design of the engineering of this. So I built my own system. And the system I'm going to tell you about utilizes uh, a jar that you w would get from uh, Kroger's. Uh, I believe this is a uh, pickle jar. And you'll drill two holes in it. One hole big enough for a clear plastic tube that you can get from Home Depot or probably Lowe's. Another hole that will fit a uh, flexible tube uh, that you can draw a vacuum on. <clears throat> this lid will then screw on to your glass pickle jar. Notice that I have put uh, caulking tape. Caulking tape you can buy from an air conditioner, probably Home Depot. If all else fails, probably a couple uh, big chunks of chewing gum would work just fine. But you put the tape around each opening to keep a seal. You want to form a vacuum seal. The tube with the needle, you want to have enough to go down and touch the bottom of your jar. Now that jar, at some point, you're, before you draw blood, you're going to put about a good half inch of uh, peanut oil or olive oil, something like that, that will sit on the bottom. This will sit down into that oil and prevent oxygen from coming up and prematurely starting to clot. At least that's my theory on it. The, the length of this uh, clear tubing should be 12 to 14 inches long. If you get a long tubing, particularly like this, this is kind of ridiculous. Well, by the time blood gets from one end to the other, uh, it's encountering a lot of viscous flow uh, resistance. It's, it's starting to uh, form clots and everything. It just doesn't work well. I found that out. I've never had a successful draw with this system. This always works for me. Now, once you get your tubing, you can order your 16-gauge uh, needles off the internet, and this is really for veterinary, so you don't veterinary use, so you don't have to have a prescription. The end of it uh, is uh, is metal, and because it's metal, it's more durable. You just take your plastic tube, take a lighter, warm up the plastic tube a little bit and force this over it. Once you get the tube over it, I find it a good idea to take a fine wire and wrap around there and crimp it just to make sure it can't come off. I don't always do it, but it's it's a good idea. The only other bit of advice is 
occasionally, I mean, I just can't believe this ever happens, but it did happen to me once. The needles will come from the manufacturer and they're not clear. There's still a piece of sheet metal over the inside. So look down it, make sure you can see through it, or if not, see if you can draw air through it. That means it's clear. What happened to me when this was blocked and I'd put it in my arm into the bronchial vein there, of course the blood couldn't go anywhere. It started backing up and started doing all kinds of crazy things. And then it just, uh, what we call blowing a vein. It just caused kind of a balloon, about a quarter inch or a half inch or so. I just took the needle out and uh, put my uh, packing over it, taped it up, and no problem. Blowing a, blowing a vein is a word you hear a lot and it's scary, but when you talk to the uh, professional health phlebotomist, they say it happens to them all the time, it's no big deal. Uh, collapsing a vein, I, I don't see that that's any big deal for me. Now, I'm not a medical specialist in this area, so I'm not offering you uh, wisdom on what I want you to do. This is just an example of what I do. Should you choose to copy that, uh, you're on your own. Okay, now, you've got this set up so when you screw the lid on your pickle jar, you can now create a vacuum by sucking on this tube. And once you get this vacuum, and don't worry, you're not going to create any strong vacuum in the pickle jar with this kind of lid. Once you get a little vacuum going, you just simply insert this into your arm. Now, unfortunately, my wife doesn't care to see blood or anything like that. So I have to do everything myself. So once I get the needle inserted, of course I usually have already pre-positioned a piece of uh, masking tape from Home Depot or Lowe's. And I can just stick that there and it's good to go. But if you have someone that can assist you and put the needle in, life's simple. But assuming you don't, this is set up to be done by yourself. Once you get, uh, get everything ready, I find a little device like this is great. You just set your jar to either side, and you've got your needle in there, or jar over here. You don't want a long tube here. You don't want a tube that'll go halfway to the floor. It's just been my experience, at least, that uh, the longer this is, the easier it is to uh, initiate clotting. I've noticed the needles are uh, easier to insert that uh, the ones that come from the veterinary supply as opposed to the ones that come from professional medical supply houses. And I studied both of them. It turns out that they engineer the ones from the veterinary supply better. The needles have a longer bevel. Both same gauge, but that longer bevel makes the insertion much nicer. <laughs> Interesting term. Uh, so nice, yes. Now, once you once you get this inserted in your arm, you're sucking on this to draw a vacuum, and then just slightly squeeze here from time to time. Of course, I'm not going to go into the details about drawing blood. You know, you want the bevel edge up, and you want a tourniquet at first, and then take the tourniquet off. Now, after you finish, here's what you get. Now, I always draw, because I'm drawing about every three months, I draw two pints of blood. That may be too much for you. You may want to draw half that amount. But here's what two pints of blood look like. Now, understand that if you draw two pints of blood, or maybe even a pint if it's your first time, you're going to feel very weak, very tired, probably the first four days. It will take somewhere between four days and maybe up to seven or eight days, depending on how much uh, replenishment you need, for the plasma portion to fill back in to your veins and get your blood volume back to where it should be. You know, initially you're drawing equal amounts, you know, plasma and blood, but the plasma doesn't jump right back in. It just gradually seeps back in. So when you check your blood for thickness, you wait at least a week before you check it because that uh, hematocrit, which is the amount of blood you have, will keep going down. Okay, here's what you get. Blood is a beautiful thing. Think good things about blood. If you don't, it'll scare you to death. Okay, this is what I tapped out the last time that, uh, just a few days ago, and this represents about 30 ounces of blood. You'll notice at the top part here, 
we have uh, about half inch or so layer of oil. That's the oil that keeps the oxygen from initiating premature clotting. Then over half of this region in here is the plasma. That is the electrolytes and other specialty proteins that uh, your blood carries. Then the last 45% roughly is the red blood cells. Now somewhere buried in this dark region is a huge humongous blood clot which is just like a big jelly thing and it's covered with a very fascinating covering. It's like a, a fabric. Uh, it's actually uh, connective tissue and that's formed from elements in the blood and the blood cells themselves and that's why this tough connective tissue layer that forms around your clot makes it almost impossible for well-organized deep vein clots to remain permanently. And that's why, again, you don't want to allow your body to build up too much blood. In my case, if my hematocrit gets to 55%, that's a big danger signal, and I've got to dump some blood right away. Otherwise, the least little thing, like just shoveling a little bit of dirt or something, has been known to actually trigger a massive clot, deep vein clot. Now that I know the warning signals and my limits, uh, I can manage all of that much better. Don't be afraid to be on Coumadin. I did this when I'm on Coumadin. Uh, really, this won't uh, pose any problem. Of course, one, people, uh, one thing people always worry about is, well, what happens if I pass out or something like that? I don't know. You, know, you can try it if you want, but I, don't, I doubt if your blood is going to flow too long because once you stop that vacuum, uh, my blood systems always clog up. And when I say systems, I'm referring to the jar and everything. It was not until I introduced the stage where I can keep a constant vacuum that I could keep blood flowing. It will take about 30 minutes to uh, drain that much blood. Again, if you're new to it, you probably want to drain about half as much. Use a piece of masking tape to put on the jar so that you know what level you need to see when you're watching that blood fill up in that jar. I hope this has been helpful to you. There are many other tips that I'm sure I could pass on, but I just don't have time for. Now, I know this won't appeal to many people, but for a few, this may be a real lifesaver. Thank you, and watch again. We'll have more information. Bye-bye.